thank you for joining us today on Transition Talk. Um, but you were a professional track runner. You represented Team USA for over 10 years internationally. You went to the Olympics twice. You were a silver medalist from London. You won two world championships in track and field in 2009 and 2011. And you also have an array of international medal um, at World Cups and World Championship. Um, and you're still in the top five fastest women in the 400 hurdles. Um, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. I'd love to hear more about your career. Obviously, today we're going to talk about more about your transition. But before you, we do, can you tell us a little bit briefly the, the, the journey that you were on when you were competing? You know, I've always wanted to be the best um, since I was a little girl. So I started running when I was five years old, I went through high school school, college, and of course, being a professional athlete with that same drive, something that I tell people you can't teach a child, she, he or she is either born with it or not. So I've always been that, had that drive and super competitive. And I literally had a bucket list of everything that I wanted to accomplish while being a professional athlete. Um, break the world record, American record, uh, win a gold medal in the Olympics and a gold medal in world championships. So I made the world gold. I made the American record, missed the world record by a, a smidge and um, missed the gold by a smidge as well. So just two off that bucket list. But um, yeah, that's kind of just, I guess, my career in a nutshell. Uh, I, I, um, I'd like to know how your transition came about. So you had this incredible career. You were very successful. The, the hurdles, the 400 hurdles is very competitive mm -hmm. in the U.S. And, and, and internationally as well. Um, how did your, your end of career and your transition came about? Yeah, so um, 2016, I was going for what would have been my last Olympic team and was at practice one day training about a month and a half away from trials, maybe two months away from trials. Went over a hurdle and broke my arm tore my meniscus, took me out. So uh, 2016 was just a done deal for me. And before that, prior to that year, the injuries kind of just compacted on. I just couldn't seem to have like a clean year without some type of injury. Um, so after 2016, I said, you know what, I'll try one more year because at that time, how old was I? Maybe 33? I think I was 33, 2016. I said, you know, I'll go one more year because it'll be a world championship year. That was in 2017. Uh, and then I had another injury. Like I was training um, for some, whatever reason. I was at a park training. It was a crazy pothole in the grass that I didn't see. Rolled my ankle and tore a couple of tendons down there. And I'm like, I think this is a sign for me to stop. Because, I mean, it was, I was so fragile and I was, you know, just hurting myself, end up having back surgery uh, from an ongoing issue that I had with my back. And um, I, I think that was the thing that said, you know, I, I don't train just to run. I train to win. So if I'm not in the best position to at least get my best, I think it's time to just step away. Because, you know, training and winning and competing was super for me. Like, that was something important. Uh, so I decided to just back away in 2017 and it wasn't like a happy moment it was something that I dreaded it was something that I was very sad about and probably even depressed about and um, and those emotions sometimes still come you know back and forth because it's only been three years mm -hmm. so um, it, it doesn't feel like I've been gone that long. And, you know, every now and then you always have that thought where maybe I should go back. Maybe I can just go back and I can train because it's not that far away from, you know, when you used to do it. So um, I don't think it was like, I didn't know that I was truly transitioning until then. But years before I was taking steps to just kind of prepare because I figured I had time. So I said, well, let me just prepare. So like I finished my college degree in 2014, the fall, um, because I left college early to pursue the professional track career. So I said, well, let me get this done now. At least I'll have this, you know. So I finished my degree. I did an executive business program at Dartmouth to um, kind of introduce me into some of those concepts that you would enter in in business. Uh, which was a really good experience. I, I'm grateful that I was a part of that. And um, 
And then I just kind of stayed involved with the sport by connecting with different groups like USADA, where I'm like a presenter, a presenter and I go and educate uh, athletes at international competitions from multiple sports. And um, coaching, of course, I stay, I stay with the coaching. And I do some contracted work where uh, I get to use some of those business concepts that I learned in Dartmouth for small companies and um that's kind of what I've been doing since I transitioned from the sport, but it hasn't been anything that is solid and that I'm saying this is the career I'm moving forward in yet. Which is a, a pretty normal process. I mean, it takes years to like sort of go through that grieving process, you know, and, and deal with the emotion of retiring and then eventually like figuring out, testing different things and figuring out what is like that you, you want to do really. Um, after such a successful and long career. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever consider retiring um, earlier in your career? I mean, you've had a pretty interesting path. You became a mother pretty early on before mm -hmm. having all your success. Mm -hmm. Was what, Were there time before 2016 where you were like, mm, maybe, maybe this is it? You know, no, it wasn't. I, I had a pretty strong conviction of what I wanted to do in the sport. So, uh, but having kids when I was pretty much at the prime at that time, uh, I didn't know what the future held for me, but I was ranked number one in the world and then I became pregnant with twins. I thought that I wouldn't make it back to the type of athlete that I was. It was never a thought that I should quit and I was kind of like upset at myself for becoming pregnant. And that was another uh, part of my life where depression has set in because I really thought that I would never be the athlete that I was before. And that, uh, that me wanting to pursue, still pursue after becoming a mom was wrong. So I would battle back and forth with my emotions of still wanting to be an athlete, but thinking that you aren't able to do both at the same time. So um, I fought with that a lot and I thought my life was over. Literally, that's what I thought. Like my life is over but uh luckily i had my mom there who went through the same thing she was an athlete as well uh she was pregnant and still came back after her pregnancy and was training and doing all the above so she was there uh to kind of walk me through what i would feel and the especially with my body and uh the emotions that might come and just know that it's like the rainbow is at the end of the tunnel so you just have to keep pushing through so i say it like it was easy but it was a very long lengthy process to go through um with my emotions and dealing with the depression and you know coming with that it's pretty amazing that you you were able to do that and it's really good to hear that you had that conviction that you still have a lot more to give and you still wanted to achieve your goal that that's quite impressive i think also the fact that um perhaps your belief that you couldn't be a mom and and run um, it is really something that comes from external factor. I don't think it's something that we have in us. It's just society believes that you're an athlete, you retire, you have kids or whatever, you know, there's sort of like a set process. Um, and it's really nice that your mom was there to help you look at things differently. Yeah, because the, all the feedback that I heard was like, how could you mess up your career? You had such a bright future ahead of you as an athlete. So these are the things that, like you said, externally that were coming at me. Mm -hmm. And I started to believe it. So I'm like, I was a great athlete. What have I done? Like, literally, I use my body for my business. And I just took that away from myself. So like I said, I was upset with myself. And then I was upset at myself for being upset at myself. So yep. it's the craziest feeling in the world. But yeah, it was all from outside influence. It's difficult for the kids as well. Obviously, you know, these are all emotions that you can transfer on your kids. So you, you don't want to be stagnant in that situation. You want to be able to perform at your best in, in, your, in your sport, but also perform as your best um, as a mom. And, you know, I'm sure every athlete wants to be the greatest parent like they do in their sport. So, yeah. you know, being able to do the two and do it well, um, so it's quite I'm impressive. Gonna, Very yeah, impressive that you were able to do that, Like my will to just like win is ridiculous. So I wanted to be like this great mom too, which was too much pressure, like <laughs> drove myself crazy. But that's exactly like it transferred over to like motherhood, how I was as an athlete. So 
early on in the transition um what what emotion did you go through what 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 were the biggest challenges as you just like okay said this is it i'm done right so you know when you when you're finishing up well when i was like in the process of doing that you speak to people uh some who went through the same thing some who are already in like the corporate world or whatever have it and uh, you just kind of talk about some of your wants or what you kind of see yourself doing and kind of picking their brain and they always seem to say like oh your resume is amazing like who wouldn't want an olympian you know a part of their company or our business school or you know because business school is something that i wanted to pursue as well who wouldn't want that like you're a shoe in and i'm like a shoe in like they gave me hope i was hopeful I'm like, this is great. Like, I'm glad that at least all these years since five years old that I was working hard will pay off in other ways, um, you know, rather than just on the track. But every single place I went to, it was a door shut. It was not the easy, everybody loves the Olympian uh, intro that I received. You know, it was, you need more, um, what is the word? It's the easiest Experience. word. Experience? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> they say the mom brain. You need more experience. And I'm like, well, what kind of experience? And then you would get upset because it would be something administrative. And it's like, this is a simple training of maybe three days. When you, you know, like, it's, it's not rocket science. I can literally get trained and I'll have it. So it wasn't something that I was in, incapable of doing, but it was still an excuse to use to say like, yeah, we need, we'll just look for another candidate. So it was hard for me to just accept that I have to start from scratch. When I, I put in so much time and what seems like now a different lifetime with the sport and um, that they're just like, that means nothing. You have to start over, get your experience here. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, I have experience from on this side you know i managed myself i did all these things i a lot of things i know that you probably don't know just from dealing with different agents and promoters and shoe companies and you know stuff like that but i think that was the hardest part like being told like it's not enough what you have done and you need to do more yeah and i think that's a quite common feedback that you get from athlete is you know past the discipline the self-starting work the motivation you know there's a lot of skills that soft skills that athletes have but mm -hmm. you still get this message of like yeah but you don't have this or you don't have right. this and and it can get quite frustrating yeah um, and you realize that you know there is a different way of of speaking or interacting that needs to be learned that is in business so i think it's quite a common um a common feedback from athletes and something that that um is quite frustrating because you feel that you can learn it pretty quickly and you know <laughs> as an athlete that you learn really quickly you can you you absorb things much quicker than other people right um and you're used to being trained you're used mm -hmm. to being coached so you take direction fairly easy you take criticism pretty easy yeah. did you have any challenge with physical um anything physical or um or it was it just mostly around your identity and and what comes next yeah just identity um <laughs> i'm one of those people like i've been training my whole life i don't want to think about that kind of stuff until i start gaining weight and you know then it's another thing but the the identity crisis is pretty big it's hard to let go of something that you excelled at so well you know, I'm, I'm, I was considered an expert at something or the best in the world at something. It's hard to say that no longer exists. So it's more so the identity that I struggle with. And, and your family was really closely involved in your career. Um, how was the, how were the last three years, how were your relationship impacted in, a, in if anything, um, by you not being in, in your professional career anymore? So my family has always been very close knit. So that didn't change anything. We still see each other all the time. But I do feel that my mom worries a lot about me because it has been a struggle transitioning. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, she gives me anxiety because she's so worried about me. 
<laughs> you know, she's questioning about different jobs and this, that, and the other. And it's just like, it's going to happen when it happens. You know, like you're stressing me out, just trying to be helpful. So um, the dynamic of our relationship in some way is still kind of like a coach and an athlete. I was going to say, she's still coaching you. <laughs> in some kind of ways it is like that. But um, we're still very close. My sister, my whole family we've always been like that. We were raised like that. So nothing has changed major with that kind of stuff. You being a female athlete and a mother, do you think that impacts your transition or your ability to, to transition into another career or, or maybe switch faster to a different path? I, I think it does. I think that we're women with kids or family. Um, they're viewed in a certain way. It's like, it's a automatic, perception that you're just not going to be available mm -hmm. or that you you probably need to we we're going to let you go because we know you want to be home with your family or your kids and isn't like a perceived thought that we don't really want to work and i know you really want to be with your kids or stuff like that so i think it's just um the value you could tell that uh, as a mom in the workforce and even as an athlete you're valued less and I don't think it's uh, intentional, but uh, you, you, I just seen it. I've dealt with it from day to day. Like it's, it's there and it exists. So um, it's pretty hard to navigate through, but uh, it's a part, it's a part of life, you know? So. What, ty what type of field have you looked into or are you interested in? now that you're not competing do you have like an idea already or you're still yeah. in that phase of exploration and well i definitely dealing with being a mom and being a professional athlete and now like a working mom i definitely want to be remain in sports and i feel like uh kind of getting I guess in sports marketing, but I, I want to be involved with women primarily, like telling stories of women correctly. And I feel that, especially on the executive level, that um, there are no women at the table and they're telling our stories. And I feel that I can have a big impact and be, uh, I can uh, be helpful to kind of relaying that to the public. So I really want to get there. Uh, what One part of your we haven't touched on yet um that i think he's not really talked about and it's really important you know you were a professional athlete for a long time you probably made a certain level of salary first of all did were you um able to save enough to see things going coming sorry you know and plan for your transition and second of all um how do you feel about your next job because i think a big step of transitioning is if you were a professional athlete and you want to go into the corporate world, you're likely to get a big pay cut. Um, and, mm -hmm. and that's also a, a mindset and a lifestyle to switch. Um, so I'm yeah. interested yeah. in your view on that. So track, <laughs> track and field athletes do not make a lot of money. I was lucky enough to make enough money to not have to work. And I, I was able to save money, yes. Um, but it was nothing where I can just sit down for six, five, six years trying to figure out my next moves. No, yeah. it wasn't that. So uh, it did give me a small cushion, very small, I say, <laughs> to, you know, to just try to keep, try to figure it out. But um, our salaries are not that good. And you have like, the top 1% that actually can make a living off of this and not just retire and kind of live their life. No, just able to make a living yep. without having to, you know, work another job. Um, so, you know what? I knew that the money would not be the same once the transition happened. I knew, I knew it. Um, the athletes that came before me that were already running professional that when I came on in the beginning, they were on their way out they already let us know, like, this is how it is, you know, be prepared. And you kind of brush it off because you're so far from that space. And then one day you wake up and you're there. But, um, so I didn't assume that, but it's, it was just hard knowing, like, you had no, um, hand in 
like determining it at all. You know, as an athlete, you can negotiate things. You can put put numbers up there and say, all right, you don't like that number, but if I do this, this, and this, and can we get back to this number? It's always a negotiation. I feel like in the, the business world, especially when we're considered entry level, it's like, take it or leave it, yep. get out of it. <laughs> so that, that was kind of hard to like deal with. And you know, I was kind of stubborn with that. It's like, I'm not taking anything lower than this. And it's like, um, you have to start somewhere. You better get over that. After so many no's and well, we can't do anything for you. It was like, oh, we have to reevaluate what we're doing here. So yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And it's a it's a hard wake up, right? You can you're not used to it. The the business world is is black and white on that front. You know, once you get to a certain level, right? You know, in management and executive level, um, you have a different negotiation power. But once you have a little more room. The level, there's not no there's no power whatsoever, no leverage. How do you look back on your transition? And your career and do you feel that you could have prepared prepared better for your transition out of sport and if so what would you have done differently now that you've you're three years out absolutely i am um, hindsight i would have had some type of career coach like in college and because i was always a good athlete it was known that i would be an olympian it, kind of was set for me. So I feel that I knew that then that I should have had someone kind of help me help me map the path out of what it would look like if I went down this road or this road and kind of trying to prepare for either or. Um, so I would have worked with a career coach. Um, I would have been more strategic on planning my major while in college. And um, as a professional athlete, I would have did a little more research on using financial advisors. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I was so scared of becoming broke that I was able and willing to just throw a lot of money uh, to financial advisors without really knowing anything. I just was like, make me more money. Here's the money, you know, just make sure that I'm not broke. And um, I, that's not cool. You should you should be educated in every aspect of your career. And that was a part of my career. Then I didn't realize it, but um, it was. So I would change that as well. And also, I think just taking care of my body a little better. I ran myself into the ground just trying to accomplish all these goals I had. Uh, I ran through a ton of injuries and I feel that if I would have just took care of my body, relaxed a little bit, that I would have been a little better um, able to plan to transition, that my career would have ended more so of how I wanted it to and, yeah. and then the transition would have been smoother if I would have took care of my body more. Do you, do you still deal with rehab and, you know, body maintenance still, or is this something you've put aside? <laughs> For now, I have. I put it aside. Um, actually, I'm going to start working out again because I gained weight from the baby. But um, I think more so I'm on the, the nutrition side. So I more so try to eat better rather than working out. <laughs> um, but, but I will start back working out now because I gained a little weight. Is there anything else that you would have done um, to better prepare you mentioned your the body, you know, taking mm -hmm. care of your body. I think that's a common, a common thing that athletes look back and they're like, "Oh my God, I really did not take care of myself." Yeah, actually, there is something. I think that a mentor would have been good, an an active mentor, because you have people that you might call every blue moon, but no, I'm talking about someone that you're checking in once a week or once every two weeks with cons consistently. Um, I think that goes a long way, um, and I would advise that people get a mentor. It's hard to find a mentor. People, to have someone dedicate their time for free to you is asking a lot. So if you do find someone that's willing to do that, that's the value of that is like priceless. So Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I think that's why the, uh, the coaching the life coaching uh, profession is developing so well yeah. because you know everybody needs a coach as an athlete you need a coach but to be the best in your life 
post athletics, you also need to have a coach. So that, that I, makes a lot of sense. Are you still in touch with your teammates? Um, I was going to say your, your coach, but obviously you are. <laughs> and my um, but, coach, actually. Uh, but just curious if you felt that you had lost that social connection with, you know, the running yeah. community. You know I, I did. I did because a, a large part of my uh, posting on social network was the sport. And now that I I don't have that to post. I'm not as interesting, in my opinion. But um, also, I, I'm just, sometimes I might not be up to date on some of the new things or the news in the sport. I try to be, you know, as much as I can, but it's a fast-moving sport, and things happen daily. So um, sometimes you feel lost, and you feel like you were never a part of this world. But, um, so yeah, sometimes I feel that uh, I'm left out or um, just lost. And then it, it, it would take one thing like me attending an annual meeting or uh, working with USADA to, you know, to just feel like you're right back in there. But um, yeah, so if I had to do uh, one word to describe it, sometimes I feel uh, left out. Oh, that's two words, left out. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's pretty, uh, again, that's, that's pretty common. Um, you, you just feel you're not belong you don't belong anymore or people don't really pay attention to what you're doing anymore um yes yeah. sort of left on the side um it's a pretty strong it's a pretty strong feeling um how do you look back on your career now you know you've had a few years to digest um do you have any regrets is there anything that you'd have done more well i don't know if you know but it um it came up that um, the Russian gold medalist in my race uh, is up for a negative test or doping, whatever you, whatever it is. So at this point, I think it's all formalities and her arbitration date is, it's coming up in July. So I probably will be moved to the, the gold. And just to hear that is like disturbing for me, you know, the I feel that would have changed the trajectory of my career just being a gold medalist. It it would have. It would have. And, and we're talking about London here, so like 2012 and when you know it's eight years ago. And there's eight, only now they're only now coming to a conclusion on what happens happened, right? Yes. So it's it's hard to like swallow that pill. That's hard. Um so looking back on on my career that's where it kind of it's a hard stop there because it's like that's what you reach for that's the one thing that all athletes want to get they want to obtain the gold medal and to be that close as a clean athlete and now i'm coming to find out i was competing against an athlete that was doping it hurts so it's hard for me to even um, watch races of myself um, sometimes it's hard to even watch track meets sometimes, you know, I might watch it, but if I'm feeling a certain way, I'll probably just, I'll just let it go and not watch it because it still, it still impacts me in a way that I don't like, you know, and I still, I know that I had a great career. I know I did. I accomplished a lot of things and it's rare that you have an athlete, um, be as good as I was from, an amateur athlete all the way to a professional athlete. That's very rare. I get it. So I know that I had a good career. I know I accomplished a lot. But when you put all eggs into that one basket and it almost worked, it's hard to say, huh, that was a good, you know, even though it was still a good career, yeah, like I said, I'm a winner. And, and you know, from the outside, um, I – we all, we we look at your career and think wow that that was absolutely amazing you know she's she's fantastic um do you feel that if there was a decision made and you ended up with the gold medal now do you feel that this would give give you some closure some positive feeling some closure not a positive feeling though because the situation isn't positive at all uh, closure, yes, that's a good word. It would give me closure to know that the work didn't go in vain. Um, 
and that you achieved that last piece of your of your goals yeah you retired three years ago mm. and so i'm curious if you still feel in your process of transition do you feel that you know what phase are you in how, how how's your process been it's been so rough for me so rough i guess how can i describe it um it's it's hard i have to often talk myself out of thinking i'm not good enough i have to talk myself out of it constantly because you hit so many roadblocks um if i had to say a stage that i'm in i am nowhere near the finish line i know that much uh as far as the transitioning goes i i think i'm still if if i could correlate it to like training for a big event i'm still in preseason which means you're not even Literally. looking at any competitions right now you're just trying to keep yourself from dying you're trying to keep yourself from throwing up at practice and saving your body and just making it day to day that's where i'm at i'm in my preseason of transition and it's like i can't wait to get in shape to be able to compete in season that's how i feel that's a pretty good strong statement because you're right you still have a long way to go if you feel that way Lashinda, can't wait to see what you accomplished. Thank you so much for doing the interview.